Welcome to Picto 1.5. This uh, new release introduces a major feature, which is the ability to annotate your images from within Picto. Let's look at it. Now, when you hover over an image, you get this little icon that lets you access a new pop-up window with uh, all the basic annotations right, right there. So you have your ratings, you have your color tags, your flags, or your favorite. You can set a color tag and you get this uh, nice feedback effect. Set a rating, set a flag, set favorites. Uh, you can also access the favorite button right from within the, uh, uh, the image itself. Annotations are also available in the uh, detail view. So when I double click on an image, I'll get the uh, annotation widgets right underneath the image. So again, you can set a rating, um, set a color tag, and you can also use keyboard shortcuts to, um, to do that. And if you do a set a rating using a keyboard shortcut, for example, let's set that to a four star image, it's going to move to the next image. So let's have a look at the uh, film strip above. Let's set this to five star. And as you can see, you get the animation and it moves to the next image. So you can annotate um, your images from uh, from within the detail view and, and move quickly to the next one. Image that you annotate in Picto um, are labeled with uh, this little blue icon. So here, for example, I'm looking at a four star image in Picto, as opposed to uh, the ratings that come from the uh, underlying catalog, like in this image here, I'm looking at a five star image, but the five star are coming from the underlying catalog. So if I set that to uh, four star instead, um, the icon now is blue. By opening the inspector, um, you can see that next to the annotation, you get an icon that uh, uh, tells you whether the annotation you're looking at is the picture annotation or the one from the underlying catalog. So here, the blue icon tells me that this is the four stars coming from Picto, whereas if I click on the icon, I get the uh, five stars coming from Aperture, which was the underlying catalog. In the inspector, you also have access to um, uh, some uh, text information, such as the title, um, the caption, version names, etc., which you can now uh, modify from within that view. All annotations that you set in Picto are saved in the Picto database and, and are persistent. Annotations are not sent back to the uh, underlying catalog. So if you set uh, some star ratings in Picto, these are not going to flow back uh, to the underlying catalog, say, for example, an Aperture or a Capture One catalog. There is only one situation where we make the annotations flow back, and this is in the case of the file system. Uh, we're going to come back to this a little bit later. So with the annotation feature, you can now um, create, um, annotate uh, your, your images from within Picto. And of course, you can use those annotations in filters or in smart albums. So if I, for example, set that as a favorite and I'm filtering on favorites, uh, this image is going to show up. So when you perform a filter, we are going to pick either the uh, the value that is coming from Picto or the value that is coming from the underlying catalog. So for example, if you set your filter to five stars, we're going to, let's do it. Let's set uh, all the images that have five stars. As you can see, there are some images here that have five star in their underlying catalog and they are picked up whereas some other images have five stars that have been set up in Picto. Um, and, and this is why uh, it's, going to, it's going to be picked up. This image, for example, is a four star in Picto, but I'm sure it's a five star in its underlying catalog. So let's just check that. You can see 
it's five star in aperture four star in picture so setting a five star filter will pick up this image because in one of the two systems it has uh, five stars This version also comes with uh, some new capabilities in terms of uh, synchronization. Um, first of all, in the case of Capture One Catalog or Capture One Sessions, we now do a much better job at finding what has changed and at displaying those synchronization. Um, but there are also some uh, situations where uh, you know that something has changed and Picto is not showing it up. So now there's a new option to synchronize a specific image. So for example, let's open this uh, image in, uh, in Capture One. And let's make a change in the um, exposure here. So I made this image a bit darker. Um, and it could happen sometimes that a Picno is not picking up that change. Um, now you can, if you know that you've modified something, you can synchronize specifically one version. And now it picks up the, the, the right change. Uh, you can also uh, synchronize uh, multiple versions at once. If you know, you can just synchronize those, uh, those versions and it's going to pick up whatever has changed if you know that something has changed. Um, in general, we, we have a, a much better um, uh, indication of what has changed and uh, uh, we also uh, give you some hints about, about those changes. So for example, if I go into Finder, let's just duplicate this image. We, um, we will have information now about what has changed and, and let you click on the button to, to do that change. We also have uh, improved the way we um, we interact with catalogs that are already open. So for example, uh, we used to have that little button that, that was a bit mysterious, but that was telling that uh, synchronization is currently locked because the uh, catalog is open. Now you can click on the button and it confirms that the catalog is currently open, but you can still sync and you have a clear button uh, that lets you do that uh, synchronization. So that's about it for uh, synchronization. Annotations made in Picto do not flow back to their um, underlying catalog. So if I set an image to be a five-star image in Picto, this information is not going to flow back to, say, uh, the Lightroom catalog where this image uh, is coming from. Um, this is, uh, there, there is one exception though, and that's uh, for watched folders. You can activate what we call an XMP round trip, meaning that whatever you do in Picto is going to be written down uh, to the sidecar of the images, and uh, those apps that support those sidecars and can read the metadata from those sidecars will update accordingly. So in order to activate that round trip, you have to open the uh, Picto preferences, go to the new sync tab and, and choose automatic in this uh, menu. By default, the value is no synchronization, so nothing happens. Not every annotation stays inside Picto, but if you activate automatic for files, and watched folders, we are going to uh, update the XMP file. So let's have a look. Um, and in order to demonstrate that, we're going to open an, another app that supports XMP, and this is a, a DxO Photo Lab. So let's look at uh, that same folder inside of Picto and inside of Photo Lab. And this image here is currently a three star image in Photo Lab and a three star image in Picto. If I change that rating to be a five star, if you watch closely, you see that the image is now getting updated and it has a five star. Um, for other information such as, for example, uh, the, the picked flag, 
we can uh, we cannot convey that information using XMP. So instead, we will use um, a keyword. So if I pick this image in Picto, now it is picked. If I go back to uh, Photolab, you will see that we've added a keyword called picked in Picto. So you can, uh, from within Photolab, uh, exploit that information uh, being picked or rejected uh, using um, those keywords. We'll take this image, for example, which is the one uh, next to it, I think. Yeah, this is a JPEG image. Uh, if I reject it using the rejected flag here, it is now rejected uh, in Picto and uh, disappears as a keyword in the XO Photo Lab. So you can see that the XMP round trip lets you uh, communicate whatever you do in Picto uh, to other apps such as Bridge or Photo Lab or other XMP based um, apps. And this is true for ratings, it's also true for uh, the textual annotation that you can set in Picto. This release of Picto introduces also a few new options when it comes to um, sorting and search. First of all, sorting, we've added the ability to uh, sort by rating or sort by color tag or by flag status, as well as by last edit date. I can now sort um, my uh, images by rating, ascending or descending. Um, it's going to use uh, the ratings that are uh, coming either from the annotations or coming from the uh, uh, file itself. For example, in the case of this image, uh, it's a four star in Picto, uh, but it's probably still a, a five star uh, in its underlying catalog, hence the um, the fact that it's rated among, among the, five, the five star images. So just be careful when you look at ratings. Um, it's going to pick the, the value that is the highest uh, in, uh, in whatever uh, system that has been used to annotate. The, the other things that we've added is uh, in the case of smart albums. When you create a smart album, you can now use additional, um, additional conditions based on the file name extension or path itself. So if I look at um, the file, section, I now have access to the file name, file extension, and file path. And I can, for example, uh, look for file that have, uh, that contain, for example, this series of digits here. So if I apply, click on an image, I will see that series of digits uh, in, in the file name. So these are new options and um, that let you control more what you put in into smart albums. If you have um, an organization that is based on file names or folder names, etc. This release of Picto also comes with a number of improvements made to the user interface. First of all, in the inspector, we've uh, completely reorganized the EXIF and IPTC uh, panel to make them easier to read through better user alignments, uh, better hierarchy between the, uh, the various panels. And um, uh, the same for the IPTC here, we've, uh, we've uh, vastly improved how alignments are used in order to make it easier to read. We've also revisited that screen to make it less crowded, make a better use of colors, and again, alignments uh, to make it uh, much easier to read. Um, there are also some panels that contained uh, keywords that now expand uh, properly when, when there is lots of content in it, so you don't have to scroll. Uh, this panel in particular is now um, much better when, when, when it's full of keywords because it, it expands. We've also added something at the bottom of the screen, uh, which is the access to the name of the image. 
So this is an information that was hard to access. Now you can easily see uh, what, are, what is the name of the image. And if you click on the uh, um, on that shortcut, it will open the uh, uh, the file in the finder. So let's have a look. For example, this is a watched folder. Um, if I click on an image here, I can see its name. If I click on on the shortcut, it opens directly uh, the folder for that image in the uh, in the finder. And if I if I click on the uh, folder that is next to that image name, it's gonna select the folder uh, in which this image lives inside my uh, structure hierarchy here. Same here, if I click on this image and I want to see where it lives, it lives in this uh, folder called Topaz Export. If I click on here, it's going to select that in the in the structure panel. So this is uh, this is uh, an improvement to uh, to accessing things in the Finder. If uh, on the other hand you're looking at a catalog and um, you see an image, it's not going to point to the folder in the Finder, but it's going to point to uh, an album that contains this image, and it's going to select it on the left hand side here. So here this image belongs to that album called Reunion and uh, it selects it here in the, in the structure bar.